they'll be doing Palm 1091 called Shortest Path in Binary Tree, or sorry, Binary Matrix. And the Palm takes that in an n by n square grid, each cell is either empty, zero, or blocked, one. A clear path from the top left to the bottom right has length k if and only if it's comprised of cells c1, c2, dot, 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 ck, such that for each ci and ci plus one, they are connected um, by the eight directional, um, they're connected eight directionally. So that means that they either share an edge or corner. And C1 is going to be the top left, 0, 0, and CK will be the bottom right, which is N minus 1, N minus 1. And if CI is located at position RC, then the grid of RC is empty if the value of grid RC is equal to 0. So we want to return the shortest path from top left to bottom right such that the path does not, or yeah, we just want to return the number of the, of the length and we want to return the shortest path. And if no path exists, we want to turn negative one. So a couple examples. In this example, we saw it at the bottom left or uh, top left and we can jump directly to this location. So that's two steps, one, two, and here, uh, we can uh, go around like this. So we can go from zeros, uh, this location to this location to this to this. And that'll be four steps. Uh, great. So let's get right at it. Um, so I'm going to be using a coder pad so that I can test my work. So I'll start with writing a function called uh, shortest path binary matrix and I'll take in a grid and what I want to do is I want to have a I, uh, this is a searching problem so I want to have a position on the board and I want to move from those positions and uh, create new possible paths. So in order to do this, I can create a, um, a data structure uh, called a fringe and, or the variable is gonna be called a fringe, but the data structure will be a deck. And the reason why I'm gonna use a deck is because it is, it's, um, it has good performance in terms of retrieving elements from the left or the right, and also adding elements from the left and right. Um, unlike a stack, which only is really good at adding elements to one side. So uh, to load a, a deck, I will do from collections, import deck, oops, deck, great. So I'll create a new deck, and um, I'll add one value in the deck, and this will be the starting position. And starting position would be zero, zero. And as I am working through this problem, for each of the possible searches that I'm uh, going through, I also want to keep the distance uh, that has been traveled so far. So I will keep one for the distance because um, we'll always start with one distance here. And then as we move towards the goal, we'll add another distance. Great, so um, that's great. So let's, we want to take an element from this deck and add more um, paths to explore. And we want to do this continuously because when we take a element from the fringe and we explore more items, the next time we explore, there will be um, more items. So what we can do is we can use a while loop. So while the fringe is not empty, then we can get the an element from the fringe. And um, the elements 
are uh, going to store the current path and this current path will have a um, sorry I have row column and distance and from here I want to travel in all the eight directions and to do that I will do a for loop and I will loop over a variable called deltas which I will create and what deltas is is, is going to be a list of um, changes that will happen so since I can loop over in all the eight directions um, I want the deltas to contain that uh, change in R and change in column change in row and change in column and also the change in distance so um, I can write this out by just enumerating all of the different ways I can move. So I can move um, negative one, negative one, and that will be a distance of one. All these will actually have a distance of one, but um, I'll just keep it there just for uh, simplicity. So, um, and so the first, these three things indicate that I will be moving the row down by one and then I'll be moving the column uh, down by one. Uh, I'll, keep the, I'll keep the column still here and then I'll move the column up here. So let's do more of this. But in this scenario, I'll keep the um, row the same rather than moving it. And there's one thing to note here is that if the delta is zero, zero, then we're not moving at all. So we don't need this at all. And the last one is when we actually move right for the column or for the row. And this would be all of the eight directions. So we have three here, we have three here, which is six, and we have two in the middle, which is eight. So um, we have a new, we have, sorry, we have a delta R and delta um, C. I'm just gonna, let me just move this. Uh, we don't really need this, so I'm gonna, oops, that's not what I wanna do. So I'm gonna take this out. Great, so we have that. So we can that we can say that the new row is equal to delta r plus the existing r. The new column is equal to c plus delta c, and the new distance is equal to distance plus one. Um, now that we have traveled a little, we need to make sure that the new row and new column actually is within the matrix. So we need to make sure that uh, we didn't go negative because that will fall out of the um, matrix. So if new R is less than zero, then we fell out of the matrix. And if new R is greater than the uh, number N in this grid, which is gonna be uh, an N by N grid, um, then we'll also fall in out of the grid. So if it's greater than or equal to N, then um, that is not good and we can skip. So we need to save n here, so which is gonna be the length of the grid. And uh, we wanna continue. We wanna do the same thing for the row, um, or we wanna do the same thing for the column. And now we can check if this new column and new row is actually a clear spot. So we can say if the grid of new column, sorry, new row and new column. If this is actually an, this is, um, let's say if it's not an empty step, then we can uh, skip. It's important that we check this after we check the boundary conditions, otherwise this would fail because we will be trying to index in um, a grid that is out of bounds when, with our parameters. Great, so 
now that we've done that, we have a new position, and this position might be the final position. So let's say if the new row um, is equal to negative 1, sorry, it's equal to n minus 1, and the new column is equal to n minus 1, then this is the final state, and we can just return the distance that we traveled so far plus 1 which should be new distance great and otherwise um, we want to add this current path that we have so far into our fringe so we can we can keep on exploring so um, so we do fringe dot append but we actually want to append left um, the reason being is if we append right then um, we will keep on adding elements to the right of the of the fringe and then popping them out as well and that will simulate depth first search but we want to um, do breadth first search because we want to find the shortest path with depth first search we will get just the first path that we find and we have to run the algorithm to the entire tree in order to find the shortest one whereas in breadth first search which is looking for the shortest um, possible path at all times. But um, there's going to be trade-offs in terms of like memory efficiency because in breadth first search, we're going to have more data in our fringe. At, yeah. So uh, we're going to do append left to make the um, deck behave like a queue. And we want to add the new row new column and the new distance great um, and there's one more important thing that we have to do is that um, I guess there's two more things we have to do if we don't find any results and our fringe is empty then we want to return negative one and another thing we want to do is that if we've seen a location that we already visited before we want to not explore that anymore because it's already been accounted for and if we don't do this we might run into an infinite loop because we'll just be going to circles so we need a um, scene set and this could be originally this could yeah this could be uh, initially we'll have the zero zero position and if our new row and new column is in our scene set then we just want to skip then we want to continue and then um, here we can we can conditionally only append left if we have let me see no we, 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 uh, we already considered that so what we want to do here is that in addition to appending left, we want to add the we want to add um, new row and new column to the scene set. So scene dot add uh, new row new column, and this should basically be it. Um, let's test this out with some. Um, Let's test this out. So, in the example, we had a 2D matrix of 0, 1, and um, 1, 0. And this should be equal to 2, as it says right here. So, let's see if this is 2. It is. And in this example, it has this here. And then this should equal 4. Let's see if that is true and there is an error because a pen left is not a function uh, it should be a pen with lowercase l yep and this seems to be right so let's put this into the solution so, so. oops uh, whatever so I would just turn source path grid uh, let me just run this code once to make sure 
put everything right. Oh no. Uh, I just accidentally put two spaces here for some reason. Great, this looks good. Let me submit this. Ooh, so there's a wrong answer. Um, and the reason for this is I forgot something. So let's look at this. So I expected negative one, but I returned uh, four. And let's look at this a little bit. So so um, it looks like the initial position is actually invalid. And because it's invalid, uh, we want to return negative one. So that's something that we can easily implement in that if grid of zero, zero is equal to one, then we just want to return negative one. Great. And now I just want to test this uh, real quick. So this should be, this should print out negative one. It does. Let me update the code here. Submit the code. Great. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching.